Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Morning, everyone. It's Friday. <laughs> it's rainy and dull and dreary. and bleh. But that's okay, because, well, actually, we do have big plans today. <laughs> I've got consult this morning, and as soon as that consult is finished, we are racing out the door to drive to Reading, Pennsylvania to get our new edition. Caught me in a weak moment. I don't know what I was thinking, but she's a ruby redhead and she's an English toy. Yeah, <sighs> my heart. So, caught me in a weak moment. And she's young. She's only five with no problems that we know of. We'll get blood work today. So, and then we have to race back uh, to do some real estate appraisals by three o'clock. So, it's, it's, a little crazy today, a little crazy, um, but it is Friday, and um, so I, I actually thought about titling this morning um, "Mythical Creatures," <laughs> but it, instead, it's going to be a mishmash. I got a bunch of different things. Thirty-eight degrees in Michigan. Wow. They said it was supposed to be forty-nine this morning, but it's actually warm out, so maybe that's tonight. I don't know. Okay, so uh, a bunch of you know that my mom and I. Uh, once the COVID hit and we were all on lockdown, we started making quilts partly because, uh, when my children were born, I had made a crib quilt for each of them. And I thought when, uh, Sarah was announced that she was coming along, we should also make her a quilt. So my mom and I started from scratch and made her a, a farm animal quilt that came out really cute. And then, uh, since that was so much fun, we decided that, and, uh, Hugh's younger daughter, Kirsten is expecting any day now with her second, which is Millie Jane. Uh, so then we said, well, we should make a quilt for Millie Jane as well. So we made this really cute ballerina quilt for her. And Kirsten has an older daughter who will be five. I think she'll be five in December, honey. Yeah. Um, so we said, well, that's not fair. She has to have one. So she got a Disney princess quilt. And I had asked this person that we bought the ballerina squares from if she had unicorns or sloths, because that was two things that Kirsten really likes. And she didn't, but she emailed me uh, early this week and said, hey, I just got unicorns in. Do you want them? And I said, oh my gosh, I don't know who we're going to, you know, we've already made quilts for all the granddaughters. So I don't know who we're making this for, but yeah, send me the unicorns. So we got these really cute embroidered unicorns in all bright colors. They're really cute and I can't wait to do this. I'll give mom and I something to do for the winter. And um, so then my mom said, well, who are we making it for? I said, I don't know, but we're gonna make it because it's adorable. But my daughter loves unicorns. So I took pictures of all the squares and I sent them to Gwen last night and said, Hey, I'm going to make a unicorn. We're going to make a unicorn quilt. Do you want it? <laughs> and she said, yes. So then I asked her her colors and I can't remember what she said. Uh, but blues, blues and purples, I think. So I'll have to get some more ideas from her. Yeah. She's not a pink person. So, um, so yeah, we're, we're going to start another quilt and uh, it's just, 
you know, they're nice family heirlooms and something to, um, to have fun with. So, but that means I get to shop online for some material. I mean, we have stacks upstairs now, but um, we'll get some more. So I have to go to a different site on my phone. She starts selling quilts. So I, I said to uh, my mom and Hugh sort of half joking, only half that, well, that could be a, you know, a little business that we would take up. And my mom said, no way am I making quilts for sale. And then we said, well, our income, since um, these the squares caught when we get them pre-embroidered like this cost more. By the time we put the time and money into all the parts and pieces, yeah, we're making about 10 cents an hour. <laughs> but it is fun. And, you know, for somebody to have a nice heirloom like that, it's kind of cool. But then something caught my eye. And so I was reading this article. Uh, but what really ticked me off is look at this advertisement. They're using my beloved Cavaliers in their advertising. It makes me very sad. Very, very sad. <laughs> okay, got that? All right. So uh, Nestle Purina is spending $450 million to uh, change a former Miller Coors brewery into a pet food plant. Sadly, it's going to be in Eden, North Carolina, which is on the Virginia-North Carolina border. It won't be that far from us. Anybody who lives near one of these plants uh, can attest to the fact that it smells really bad. <laughs> they, they, not good. Um, they're going to produce dry dog and cat food brands, including Purina Pro Plan, Purina One, and Purina Pro Plan Veterinary Diets. Yay. Uh, it's on 1,300 acres near the border of North Carolina and Virginia, and they plan to employ more than 300 people at the new factory location by 2024. And you know how everybody's been complaining about taxes and, you know, who pays what? Well, here's part of what happens. Nestle Purina received the okay for $24.6 million in North Carolina incentives and $24.4 million incentives from the local government there contingent upon meeting job creation and investment targets. Wow. That's like $49 million. Probably didn't pay that much for the plant. Who knows? Um, the expansion is part of a broader growth plan for Purina that began last year with the grand opening of the company's newest wet pet food factory and distribution center in Hartwell, Georgia. Um, and the new Eden factory will join Purina's network of 21 existing manufacturing locations across the U.S. and will become operational in 2022. Uh, now, what this says to me, guys, is... Purina is expanding because their sales with that whole DCM thing. Their sales went through the roof. So, gee, was there an ulterior motive with veterinarians and cardiologists who have funding and grants from Purina starting the whole DCM thing, grain-free, Need must have grains in the food, must switch back to big brands, must switch back to pro plan. Well, it worked because they're expanding. It means we got our work cut out for us. Um, to, as a matter of fact, Kim, Kimberly um, Gutierrez, who's a raw food blogger, keep the tail wagging, great person. She's written uh, at least one book on raw feeding. Um, she posted a graphic today that I never saw so maybe it didn't get widely uh, promoted, but it was one that Rodney Habib had done where it's a, it, it almost looks like a Zoom meeting where you've got all these uh, squares with a different person holding up a sign. And it basically, uh, the one that Rodney did, each person holds up a sign with a sentence that, you know, it's a picture of them with their dog and the sentence reads something like, you know, feeding fresh whole foods uh, to our pets will keep them healthier and make them live longer or something like that. Well, the uh, veterinarians who support big pet food did a comparable one. Now, the great news is they actually saw what Rodney did. So that means they're actually paying attention. But they did one where they held up their little cardboard signs and it spelled out feeding 
high quality commercial pet food formulated by pet food co- experienced pet food companies will make your pet stay healthy and live longer something like that and i mean they they copied the same exact format so it looks like a, a zoom thing if you uh if you don't follow kimberly you can uh I, i'm sure you can find it i'm sure she posted it on her uh keep the tail wagging blog but it was i never saw either of those those ads or posts or whatever. Uh, but the interesting thing is they actually paid attention enough that they saw, I mean, everybody knows Rodney, that they actually saw Rodney's post and thought it was harmful enough that they needed to post a rebuttal. And they did it in kind of a cool way. Now, Kimberly kind of came at it from a different perspective. She said, well, there are some people who can't or won't feed fresh foods to their pets for whatever reason. So maybe it is better that at least somebody is coming out and saying, hey, if you're going to feed, you know, if you're not going to feed fresh food, then find the highest quality already prepared food that you can. And the good thing is in the veterinarians come back, they didn't name any brands or anything. So I don't know. It's just interesting, um, you know, that, (laughs) <laughs> so we need to, uh, yeah, Kimberly Morris Gutierrez, she, she keeps the wagging. She is awesome, uh, has tons of great information. Uh, good friend. She lives in Seattle, I believe. Um, yeah, she posted something about walking around Seattle with everything boarded up and how sad it is that you know, everything's closed, <laughs> which would be sad. So, uh, so I'm sure there are researchers watch people like Rodney all the time. I probably do. Anyway, so that's my Friday rambling. I got to get to work. I got to review the records for today's consult so that I can hit the ground running and then we can hit the road. What? Are we doing? Oh, supporters tonight. Oh, yeah, we should be doing. I didn't post that. Supporters, 7 o'clock tonight. Jeez, I have to post that. Your reminder so that you'll get it. Well, clearly I needed a reminder too. <laughs> Who'd thunk? <laughs> My phone's doing that weird thing where it's not giving me comments. It just tells me who's watching. Oh, Ronnie posted yesterday that they copied the thing. There you go. Uh, what is it? Uh, It's a, yeah, copying is the highest form of compliment, or it's, that's not the right. Imitation. Imitation is the highest form of compliment. Something like that.